Good evening and welcome to the May 13th uh, meeting of Glendale uh, City Council. May we have roll call, please? Council members Friedman? Here. Najarian? Here. Montero? Weaver? Here. Mayor Sinanian? Here. What's next? Mayor, uh, the next is the flag salute um, followed by the invocation. Today's flag salute will be led by Council Member Weaver, followed by invocation by Ardashes Kasafi. Join me in our flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for the invocation. Just this past Sunday on Mother's Day, many of us took time to honor the mothers in our lives who have helped shape us and make us who we are. The immortal American writer Washington Irving wrote that, quote, a mother is the truest friend we have. When trials heavy and sudden fall upon us, when adversity takes the place of prosperity, when friends desert us, when trouble thickens around us, still will she cling to us and endeavor by her kind precepts and counsels to dissipate the clouds of darkness and cause peace to return to our hearts, end quote. I can't think of words that could possibly add to such a perfectly appropriate statement and will only ask that we all join together to pray for the mothers of this city and throughout the world. May our city continue to be blessed with the support and love of all of our mothers and grandmothers and great-grandmothers. Let our actions and decisions be made to live up to their best expectations and establish tranquility and prosperity for all. Amen. Amen. Okay. What's next, Mr. Clerk? The agenda for the May 13, 2014 regular meeting of the Glendale City Council was posted on Thursday, May 8, 2014 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. Next is presentation and appointments at 3A is the agenda preview for the meetings of Tuesday, May 20th, 2014. Ms. Beers. Mayor Sinanian, members of the City Council, for May 20th, we have no business, business agenda items under the Housing Authority. Uh, we do have a special meeting of the Glendale City Council in the afternoon to commence at 3 p.m. This is a public hearing, Director of Community Development, regarding a proposed six-story, 94-unit multifamily residential project, which is to be located at 319 North Central Avenue. That evening for the City Council meeting to commence at 6 p.m., we have a number of consent items. Fire Chief, funding for the Junior Fire Marshal Program. General Manager of Glendale Water and Power. This is regarding pump replacement project at Dietrich and Glen Oaks 968 pump stations. Uh, Director of Public Works, maintenance of traffic signal at Broadway and Brazil Railroad Crossing. General Manager of Glendale Water and Power, integrated voice recognition software upgrade for GWP. City Clerk, regarding legal advertising contract for the City of Glendale. Under adoption of ordinances, we have one item, ordinance amending section 2.04.080 of the GMC, and this is pertaining to the order of business for the council meetings. One item under action, uh, City Attorney, this is regarding City Council meeting schedule for fiscal year 1415. And we have one item under hearings, and this is Director of Administrative Services Finance, proposed City of Glendale budget and citywide fee schedule for fiscal year 2014 uh, through 2015. And that concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Next. Next item at 3B is proclamation designating the month of May 2014 as Bike Month in Glendale. Okay. Who's going to receive the proclamation? This is Ms. Martinez from uh, the Public Works Department, and she represents our rideshare program. Excellent. This is a, our annual um, tribute to uh, recognition, and some of our, these are some of our uh, members of the public who are very avid and active in, in, in the biking world. And this is our, uh, our annual endeavor to, to proclaim May, the, the month of May is our, is our bike Bike Month with a lot of emphasis on different things, including an event we have on the 15th, which is Bike to Work Day. And we uh, encourage everybody to ride their bike that day. There are various pit stops. I think we have two pit stops in Glendale. Uh, there are snacks and, and other things uh, <clears throat> for the riders that uh, decide to use their bike that day. But we encourage everybody who can to, to, to leave that car at home and ride the bike that day. Your bike that day. Thank you, Mr. Zerd. Welcome, Ms. Martinez. Thank you. So we're going to be having um, a Bike to Work Day event on um, Thursday, May 15th at 6 a.m. in front of City Hall. And we're also going to be with Walk by Glendale at Sonora and Flower. And we encourage everyone to come in and support. Okay. Would anyone else like to say a few words? 
Hi, um, my name is Erica Camp. I'm the director of Go Glendale, which is the new the new name of the Glendale Transportation Management Association. And we're also hosting a, a stop for a pit stop for Bike to Work Day, the downtown one at 400 North Rand. And I also just wanted to take this opportunity to let you guys know that our new website just launched this week as well, goglendale.org. So I left one for each for each of you of these guys too. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to introduce your friends? Uh, these are our representatives from Walk by Glendale. We have Natalie Winarski and Alec. Great, welcome. I'm going to read this proclamation into the record and then ask Council Member uh, Friedman to present it to you. Whereas the month of May is National Bike Month and cities across the nation will be hosting events and promoting Bike to Work Day, and whereas the Glendale Employee Ride Share Program has been promoting the bicycle as an alternative transportation mode for almost a quarter century to reduce the number of single occupancy vehicles, improve the air quality, and to promote good health, and whereas the city of Glendale has made an admirable commitment to enhancing the bicycle through our rideshare program, offering free bike rides in our Glendale B-Line, finalize the bicycle transportation plan, and installing the bicycle lockers and rocks uh, throughout the city, and whereas we are engaged with partners from other local agencies and advocacy groups to list the city as a pit stop location for the Los Angeles County Bike to Work Day and provide information and support to bicyclists who visit the pit stop. Now, therefore, I proclaim May 2014 as Bike Month in Glendale. often ask, what's the answer to traffic congestion in Los Angeles and in Glendale? And sometimes they ask, what is the answer to our obesity epidemic and diabetes and heart disease? One of those answers, and a very important one, is encouraging people to get out of their cars, walk, bike, use buses, and each of you here has been a major contributor to encouraging those activities in Glendale. So I'm very proud to present this proclamation. You all deserve it very much, and thank you for all of the work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Next at sea is a proclamation designating the week of May 18th through the 24th, 2014, as National Public Works Week. Okay, and we have a proclamation uh, designating May of 2000. 14, specifically May 18th to 24th, it's National Public Works Week. I'd like to ask Councilmember Nigerian to present this proclamation to Ms. Yes. Go ahead, Anush. Anush Beglarian from Public Works Administration, and I would also like to ask the two outstanding employees to introduce themselves. My name is Esperanza Rice. I represent Public Works and uh, Facility Services. Good evening. My name is Jesus Pua, representing Public Works Engineering. And as Anush said, Jess and Esperanza are 2012, 2002 of our 2012, 2013 outstanding employees of the year. So they're representing a, a larger group, but certainly two of our all stars from, from the previous year and always, for Thank that you. matter. Congratulations. No? Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor, I just might add the Public Works is proclaimed in the 50s uh, in Glendale. We are celebrating our 25th year of recognizing the event, and we'll have our annual pancake breakfast down at the uh, Public Works corporate yard for our, for our staff from 6.30 to 9 on Thursday, May 22nd. That's next Thursday? Correct. May, May 22nd. Thank you, Mr. Zern. And what's next? Next item is at D is a presentation of the League of California Cities Public Works Officers Institute, ASCE, Infrastructure Award for Public Works and the American Public Power Association, RP3, Diamond Award for Glendale Water and Power. And who will be receiving? So we've got a whole crew, Mr. Mayor. We'll, we'll put Public Works on one side and Water and Power on the other side, and, or, or one, one in front of the other. But obviously something we're very, very proud of. Um, with Public Works, the Public Works Officers Institute of the League of California Cities, uh, this is their inaugural year for their, their Project of the Year Award. There were six given this year, three to counties, three to cities. 
Glendale was one of those cities, but even more importantly, Glendale was the overall winner for our Central Avenue project. Mr. Galani and his staff did an outstanding job as usual. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. It's with great pride that I report to you, as Mr. Zern mentioned, that we have won the top award for the 2014 uh, Outstanding Local Streets and Roads Project for our most recently completed Central Avenue and adjacent street improvement project. Um, and this, I, I need to get this correctly, this award is sponsored by the League of California Cities, the California State Association of Counties, as well as the County Engineers Association of California. And this uh, program recognizes and raises awareness of the exceptional achievements made by cities and counties to um, preserve and protect the local streets and road system. Just a little biography on the Central Avenue project. As you know, Central Avenue is a major four-lane uh, arterial going, running uh, north-south through our business district, and it carries uh, an average of 43,000 vehicles per day. This was a very complex project, and the project team worked very hard and met all the challenges um, and uh, ultimately developed a project that used cold central plant recycling technique to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and 360 project-related truck trips. Um, we had a cost saving of $340,000 compared to traditional construction methods. We saved 10,900 tires from being dumped at the landfill and recycled approximately 1,600 tons of existing asphalt concrete. And we also were able to minimize the impact to the traveling public during the 11-month construction period. The final cost was $7.5 million. We used $3.8 million out of our measure of our funds. The project was completed on time and within budget. And uh, for this award, as Mr. Zern mentioned, there were over 100 uh, submittals um, for review. 56 projects um, made the consideration. 15 projects were made as the finalists, and we won the top uh, prize out of three cities and three counties. With that, I'd like to introduce the project team who get the credit for this outstanding achievement. Mr. Samuel Modi is the project manager. Mr. Tom Cazares was the construction inspector. Also, two of our employees, Mr. Vanik Nadimian, assistant civil engineer, and Ara Rostam, the assistant construction inspector, were not able to make the meeting tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Dave <laughs> Weaver will present you with the proclamation. It says Great American Cleanup Day. <laughs> oh. Okay. I think these were just presentations. These maybe. Are just a presentation. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And well, next, thank you, and thank you for the <laughs> job well done as always. Next, Mr. Mayor is, is Glendale Water and Power. Mr. Abueg is coming up with Mr. Olson. This is to recognize the the utility, our electric side of our business. That we won the RP3 Reliable Public Power Provider Award. There are three categories: First. diamond, okay. platinum, and gold. We are in the diamond category. And of the uh, pro approximately 2,000 members of the American Public Power Association, 94 were awarded one of the three categories, 29 in diamonds. So Glendale is one of 29 of, of virtually every public power provider in the United States. And they won this award, which focuses, make sure I get this right, on reliability, safety, workforce development, and system improvement. Certainly hallmarks of a great electric utility. And this is not the first time we've won the award, but it's the first time we've been at this peak uh, in, in the process. And, and again, I'm very proud of, of Ramon and all of his staff, Eric and the engineering staff, our field staff as well. It's a job well done. Thank you. I don't think I need to say any more. Steve said it all, but the award is, is what it looks like. But just to, to emphasize, the RP3 checks on a few things. It, it allows us to benchmark ourselves with ourselves, see how, what improvements we're making, also benchmark ourselves with other utilities, how we're doing in those areas that, that Mr. Stern mentioned. So thank you. Thank you. Job well done. Eric. I was going to say, I hope all the candidates for city council out there are listening. So when they want to pick apart what they're going to do on and make it better, these guys are already doing it. And I talked to a friend last week, 
out of the blue, he says, whenever I'm coming downtown, I go on Central because it's nice and wide and smooth, well lit. It doesn't go on brand. That's the way it is. Okay, next. Three is a proclamation designating May 17, 2014 as Great American Cleanup Day in Glendale. Just take it down. If you don't, he told me to bring it down, so I'm going to bring it down without reading it all. Is that okay? Oh, I'm sure that's going to be perfect. But um, I will say who I am first in any event. I am Marilyn Ganell, and I have the pleasure of serving as the chair of the Committee for the Clean and Beautiful Glendale. And um, we have a magnificent, clean, and beautiful Glendale. Not perfect but good, really good. And some of our members are here with us this evening. Um, and one of them is going to uh, come forward to show our t-shirt. And um, you can introduce yourself, please. I'm Sarah Bersuevo. Um, and, and, and you are a member of the committee. Tell us about the t-shirt. Can everyone see it? So Neighbor Services uh, helped us design this year's event t-shirt. Uh, we will be giving these out the first 400 people to sign up on Saturday morning for the event. So you'll be able to get there quickly. Don't forget. Right. You want a t-shirt? You have to come. And it has a list of all of our great sponsors on the back. Mm. Quite a few great companies here in Glendale that help us out with this event every single year. <coughs> so um, it's a very important event for Glendale. And I'll clean and <coughs> We also have another one of our members, our newest member. Introduce yourself, please. I'm Jane Byer. And um, I don't need any reference. And nobody does. <laughs> well, no. Margaret <laughs> Campbell. No wonder they don't no. bar the door when um, <laughs> So uh, I, I just want to say a few things. Um, I'm very appreciative of this proclamation. Uh, I will adhere to Council Member Weaver's admonition, not read it or not have him read it all? If I understood you correctly. No, I said I wasn't going to read it. Oh, well, you weren't, and I guess I would But if, if you'd like but to. But we're going to look at it, and we're going to enjoy hanging it up, won't we, Juan? Thank you very much. And now, I want to tell you a few things. Um, this is the 26th year in a row that Glendale has participated in the annual Great American Cleanup. This will be taking place on Saturday the 17th, and literally hundreds of volunteers will gather in the Perkins area at City Hall and will then uh, go into the community to clean and to pick up litter and to uh, do an incredible painting project, uh, which we have um, painters who are actually craftsmen as painters, and um, they are going to be guiding others that are going to be helping them, painting those very ugly boxes, utility boxes. Have any of you ever seen those? They're all around the city, and they're going to look really, really good after this event. And uh, following all of this cleaning, there will be a celebratory barbecue lunch provided for all the volunteers. In 2013, which was last year, in the United States, more than 4.5 million Great American Cleanup volunteer participants worked a collective eight point three million hours to return nearly a hundred and seventy five million dollars in measurable benefits in twenty one thousand communities across the country. So this is big and this is major and we hope that you will join us if you contact neighborhood services, tell them you're interested or go to the cleanupglendale.org on the website and sign up there. And come and participate or come and look at what's going on and see how fortunate we are to live in a beautiful city.
of Glendale. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for this great service that you provide. Uh, again, Glendale is our broader home, our greater home, just like we want to keep our houses, our homes, our residences clean. We should all strive to keep Glendale clean just as much. Um, now, uh, what's next, Mr. Clerk? Next item is a proclamation designating the week of May 11 through the 17, 2014 as Women's Health Lung Week. Okay, and we have a guest, special guest today. Burbank, former Burbank mayor and council member, Marsha Ramos. Good evening. It's an honor to serve now as the chair of the American Lung Association in the state of California. Joining me this evening is our Los Angeles area executive director, Jill Arnstein, and a dedicated volunteer to the state board of directors and former city manager, Mary Stren. On behalf of the American Lung Association and our nationwide lung force movement, I want to thank you, Mayor Sinanian, and the Glendale City Council members and staff for the opportunity to be a part of the meeting this evening. The City of Glendale joins with thousands of other cities across the nation in this inaugural proclamation of Women's National Lung Health Week. For more than 100 years, the American Lung Association has led the fight for healthy lungs. And starting today, we're putting new effort and energy against a formidable foe, lung cancer in women. Why? Because did you know every five minutes a woman in the United States is told she has lung cancer? And because every eight minutes lung cancer kills one of our mothers, sisters, daughters, or friends. On average, less than half of all women diagnosed with lung cancer will be alive one year after the diagnosis. It's time for a change. So this morning, we launched Lung Force. This nationwide movement and turquoise takeover seeks to unite women against lung cancer and for lung health. We encourage everyone to raise their voices for this change. The goals of Lung Force Movement is simple, yet expansive. We have three goals. To increase women's awareness of lung cancer is the, as the number one cancer killer. To enroll more than one million people in the fight against lung cancer. And to save lives through risk reduction, early detection, and new treatment options. Through Lung Force, we will make lung cancer, a cause that people can care about and act on. We will support patients and empower health care providers. And we will drive change to make lung disease research a public health priority in this nation. Throughout National Women's Lung Health Week, the American Associ Lung Association is turning America turquoise. It's our movement's signature color. We are lighting buildings and other landmarks across the United States, like Ni Niagara Falls and Ghirardelli Square. And we're doing this to get the awareness out, to get the message out, and to support lung health, particularly lung cancer. We hope that next year, Glendale will join in that illumination. We ask the public to join us in this effort. We need all of you to be the force multipliers that raises lung cancer awareness among women during this important week and beyond. And how can you help? By wearing an item of turquoise clothing to work, school, or anywhere in public. By turning your neighborhood turquoise. You can do it by tying a turquoise ribbon, a turquoise banner. Uh, lighting your home in turquoise lights. You can, in, of course, there's social media. Snap a photo of you in turquoise and hashtag lung force or turquoise takeover. And most importantly, by visiting our website, www.lungforce.org, to take the pledge. We need a million of you to take the pledge, to learn, to share, to care about lung disease. And finally, and most notably, we applaud the city of Glendale's designation as a healthy city. And we also celebrate your ongoing commitment to fresh air.
Your A grade for tobacco control, control policy shines throughout this county, and I'm proud to be here tonight. On behalf of all of us at the American Lung Association, we express a heartfelt felt thank you for your continued support of this very important initiative. Thank you. And for those of you who don't know Marcia Ramos, because she is from Burbank, this is somebody who dedicates herself to lung health. Like Superman, she leaps tall buildings, not in a single stride, but she does it to raise money every year for lung health, and we're very happy to have you here. And I'm happy to be wearing turquoise, although it is a coincidence, but I I gave will you all a little so. pin, the swirl yes, pin. Thank yes, thank you. Yes, we have it here. And thank you, ladies, for coming in. Thank you, and thank you for really bringing this issue to our attention because women's lung cancer is kind of a phantom issue. Uh, it's stereotypical, but often when we talk about lung cancer, the, the, the image that comes to mind is, is, a, is an older male who's suffering from it. Apparently, it's obvious from the facts that you just listed um, that that's not the case. It's, it's a real threat to women, and therefore, more attention should come to it and more effort should be put forth to resolving this issue and fighting <coughs> women's lung cancer um, day and night. So I have a proclamation I'd like to present to you, which I'd like to read into the record before I come up there. Thank you, Mayor. Whereas every five minutes, a woman in the U.S. is told she has lung cancer, and lung cancer is the number one cancer killer of women in the U.S., surpassing breast cancer in 1987. And whereas the lung cancer death rate in women has more than doubled over the past 35 years, and whereas women are disproportionately burdened with COPD compared to men in terms of illness and death and asthma is more common in women than men, and whereas advocacy and increased awareness will result in more and better treatment for women with lung cancer, COPD, asthma, and other lung diseases, and will ultimately save lives and whereas Lung Force is the new national movement led by the American Lung Association with the mission of making lung cancer and lung disease history uniting women to stand together with a collective strength and determination to lead the fight against lung cancer and for lung health. Now therefore, I proclaim May 11th through 17th, 2014 as Women's Lung Health Week and encourage all residents of Glendale to learn more about detection and treatment of lung cancer and all lung disease. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You have a moment. Before we move on to the next item, I have two commendations that are not part of the uh, uh, agenda I'd like to present. And the first is a commendation to the Music Teachers Association of California Glendale Branch. Oh, and we have Sharon Townsend here. I could say many things about Sharon, all of them positive, but the most exciting thing is that she's a great pianist. Thank you. And she, she in fact, uh, demonstrated her uh, abilities last week at the uh, Commission on Status of Women event. She accompanied the, the singer and played two songs, which were wonderful. So I'd like to read this into the record. And uh, I guess it's a, it's a mayor's commendation. So does the mayor have to do the actual presentation? Excellent. Yes. Good. Uh, so Mayor's Commendation presented to Music Teachers Association of California Glendale Branch. Congratulations on the 80th anniversary celebration of the Music Teachers Association of California. I truly commend you for maintaining the highest level of professional standards of music education. I salute your efforts in carrying out the mission of the Music Teachers Association of California, the pursuit of excellence in music education to students in Glendale. Please accept my heartfelt and most sincere wishes for a joyous and prosperous celebration on May 18th. 
I wish you continued success for many more years to follow. Thank you very much. And on behalf of this organization, which is part of a state and national organization, I believe they've taught probably every music student in Glendale for the last 80 years, thank you to the city for your support of music education and your continued support of music education in the schools. Thank you. Thank you for giving, <laughs> the, giving the gift of music and the love of music to. Come back. Oh, I got to present Come this back. to you. Don't, don't go away. <laughs> to, uh, to our children. Okay, and I'd like to invite Shidak Hojayan for the next commendation. Now, last, wasn't last, the week before last weekend, on Sunday, Mr. Hojayan <coughs> had, May 4th. May 4th, the presentation of his movie, Apricot, Blessed Tree of Armenia. The significance of the apricot, and I'll allow you to speak a little more about it, is it's basically the national fruit of Armenia. Even in Latin, the fruit is, has the name Armenia in it. Um, so would you like to say a few words before I? Yeah, I'm Shirak Kojayan. I am the producer of the documentary Apricot, Blessed Tree of Armenia. And with me is Alin Zdigian. She is the chairperson of the Hamasgayin cultural uh, organization, Lendial Chapter. I'd like to thank Honorable Mayor of Glendale, Zare Sinanyan, and the Honorable City Council members for uh, this certificate I'm going to get. Also, I'd like to say that this is a great experience that this city, which I love, appreciates uh, art and uh, cultural events. Also, I'd like to say that the Glendale uh, Library <coughs> Center Library after they heard what success the event had on May 4th. They're going to have a screening on September 11 at the Central Library so the employees of the city and the citizens of Glendale can enjoy watching this documentary. And uh, Ms. Uh, Aline Bizdigian with, uh, with other, uh, another person was not here uh, Chris Janoyan, they both together worked hand in hand to organize this event, which was very successful on May 4th in uh, Pasadena. Yes, I understand about 800 people, or about 800 to 1,000 people turned up. 900 people. 900 people. Okay, very good. And, and just uh, as a side note, Mr. Hojayan is the husband of Seda Hojayan, our, one of our commissioners on the Commission on the Status of Women. So with that in mind, I congratulate you, and I'd like to read this uh, certificate, the commendation in, into the record, and uh, present it with you. Present it to Shirak Hojayan. Congratulations on the premiere screening of the documentary, Apricot, Blessed Tree of Armenia. It is truly wonderful to showcase culture and heritage in an artistic manner. Please accept my heartfelt and most sincere wishes for a joyous and prosperous evening. I wish you continued success in all your future endeavors. Thank, Thank you. you. Next on the agenda. Next item is City Council and staff comments. Okay. Yes, Ms. Friedman. Uh, two comments. First, I wanted to explain why I wasn't here last Tuesday. As I announced beforehand, I was at the uh, Association of California Water Agencies conference on behalf of the City of Glendale. Uh, just to bottom line, there were three things in everyone's mind. The drought, <coughs> water storage, and financing for storage and recyclable and other types of projects. People want less of the first and more of the other two. 
Um, secondly, a few years ago, I had asked staff, I told staff that I was very concerned about the city's use of poisons in our parks to control rodents and other, uh, you know, so-called pests. And I was told at the time that there was nothing we could do about it. There are certain products that everybody uses and that's it. Well, recently there's been articles in the newspaper that you may have heard about, about how these poisons, I think that they're anticoagulants, um, work their way up the food chain and end up killing predators like owls, coyotes, and mountain lions. Most famously, the mountain lion that lives in Griffith Park is very, very ill from eating rabbits and other animals that have ingested this poison. And at this point, I'm going to put my foot down and say, we need to find a better way than putting this poison in our public parks and allowing it to run through the ecosystem and killing the wildlife. So I've told staff that unless my colleagues have a huge objection, I know that there's other rodent control methods out there. I do not believe the city of Glendale should be participating in using these poisons. And I would like to hear back uh, for alternative methods very, very shortly. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Weaver. Uh, a couple days ago, I got my sample ballot in the mail. And for the first time since the 1950s, I found out that I am voting for the Glendale election in the city of Los Angeles in Eagle Rock. So I went down to the city clerk and said, why is this happening? And Mr. Kasakian will now explain what happened and what's happening to correct the problem in five precincts, I think. Um, yes, uh, Council Member Weaver, um, uh, as you and the mayor and uh, staff know, there is a June election coming up on with the ballot. There will be one seat uh, on city council as well as a charter amendment. Um, we voted to, this body voted to consolidate that election with the county, and the county has organized this election as they do with every state primary. Um, however, uh, it was uh, our surprise as well when we were told by the residents in Glen Oaks Canyon that after years uh, of perpetually, it seems, voting uh, within their own community, that they would be um, forced to go outside of the city to vote in Los Angeles. And uh, there were a couple of other um, rather, we shall say, inconvenient uh, polling locations. Um, we called the county, um, offered our assistance, and I'm happy to say that we have come to a resolution and that the folks who live in the canyon um, will be able to vote in the canyon um, or nearby within the boundaries of the city of Glendale. Uh, I should mention that the county, for those who have already received their sample ballots with their polling locations, um, they will be receiving cards from the county uh, indicating where the new polling place is. Those living, those who were previously voting at the Eagle Rock Recreation Center, which is I'm sure a fine center, but it's not in Glendale, will now be voting at Glen Oaks Park Recreation Room. Um, and that's located at 2531 East Glen Oaks. Uh, also, uh, we are fortunate enough to have this uh, door hanger pro program. Uh, and every house in Glendale that has a registered voter will be having one of these door hangers that is in um, five languages. It's in Armenian, uh, uh, Spanish, Korean, and Tagalog, as well as in English. And at the bottom here, it'll tell individuals where their polling location is. So the Canyon residents will have that information available as well. And from what I understand from the individuals and families who live in the Canyon, they have an excellent network of disseminating information about important news, and they are on top of it as well. But we thank you, we thank the residents and everyone who brought this to our attention, and we look forward to having a very high turnout on June 3rd, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a couple of events I'd like to talk about. On May 7th, last Wednesday, uh, I, along with, I believe, Councilmember Quintero, had the uh, honor and pleasure of attending the Glendale Youth Alliance's annual luncheon which was a fantastic event as always. We, um, you know, this city really embraces that organization and, and takes responsibility for it uh, for a good reason because it, it, it takes, it takes at-risk youth and uh, really turns their lives around and really makes a difference. And we have so many examples of success stories 
uh, uh, young people that have come through GYA and, and now are extremely successful individuals. So it was uh, great to be there. It was especially, especially great because it was Frank Quintero's last year as uh, a council member participating in that event, and the significance is that he's one of the three founding members of GYA. Um, next day, on May 8th, uh, I, along with I believe Councilmember Nigerian was there and Councilmember Quintero attended the Commission of Status of Women 10th Annual Awards Luncheon. Am I <coughs> getting anyone? I was at the conference, okay. otherwise yes. I would Yes, yes, okay, so good. And again, um, <coughs> this commission is a cornerstone of, of the kind of values that uh, our city represents. Uh, and accordingly, you know, everyone, uh, a, a, lot of the, a lot of the leadership of the city was there. Staff, a lot of the uh, management of the staff were there. And we were there to show our support for uh, the commission and to honor those individual women that have contributed to the life, to, 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 to the life in Glendale, to its uh, greatness. And again, I, I mean, I, you know, I wish we had the time to get into all the individuals that were honored, but I assure you they were all fantastic people, and this is a tradition that will live on for a long time. Finally, on Sunday, uh, I, along with, uh, I believe the city clerk was there also, attended the 15th anniversary of uh, the Armenian monthly public publication, Hamayna Patker, which I believe translates to Panorama. It's a publication that's located in Glendale and covers arts, politics, history, and it's in, I think it's great that we have um, media sources in Glendale, especially ones that survive for such a long time. Uh, before I ask the city manager whether he has a report for me, as I requested last week, I do want to uh, adjourn today in, in honor of a uh, longtime Armenian Bar Association chairman, uh, Viken Simonian, those that know him. Um, will be very sad to find out that he passed out today in the morning. Uh, unfortunately, he was very young, but uh, had a debil debilitating disease. Yes. And um, he was a 30, over 30 years Glendale resident, very dedicated to the city, an athlete, member of UCLA's track team, uh, an avid cyclist. He rode up uh, CSR every day religiously. But in the end, unfortunately, this disease took him away. Um, so we'll adjourn in his honor. Yes, Mr. Ochoa? Yes, sir. On uh, that sad news to something that's a little more hopeful, uh, you had asked last week, uh, based on an interaction you had with the HUD representative at the Ascensia opening, as to whether or not there might be opportunities to increase and expand Section 8 programs. So whether the gentleman from HUD was uh, signaling something or it just happens to be a happy coincidence, the long story short is we survived the sequester, uh, and HUD has finally announced what our allocation will be for the coming year, uh, or for this year, and uh, it looks as though we will get about $1.2 million in additional Section 8 funding. Um, now, as you know from dealing uh, with HUD uh, as in, in looking over the, the Section 8 program, uh, the, the problem that we have is if we don't use all of our money, we tend to lose that money. And so what you'll see as other housing agencies uh, are getting increased allocations, they are convening, uh, converting and absorbing what we call portable vouchers, vouchers from other jurisdictions, uh, absorbing them into their uh, housing program and thus protecting that allocation. What we will be recommending to you in a, in, in a very shortly upcoming uh, report at the Housing Authority is that while we protect that base by absorbing perhaps as many as 50 of our portables, because we do have a lot of portables, because we are a very high-performing housing authority, we actually are expecting to be able to uh, present to you the ability to pull about 100 to 115 families, uh, households, off of the Section 8 waiting list. That's fantastic. That's that would happen in this uh, in this calendar year, and it takes us anywhere from 30 days to 180 days uh, to qualify and place somebody from the list to the uh, lease up. So uh, Peter Zovac, Hassan Aghani, and all of their team will be working very uh, diligently to make that happen. Uh, but we will have a final report for you, uh, presumably, if not next Tuesday, the Tuesday following. Thank you. And, and, and is it my understanding that we're getting? Uh, uh, 
pretty large allocation as compared to the, to the other cities because we are a very highly performing program in the city of Glendale. That is my understanding. They want to put money where, uh, where that money will be used, um, but I think everybody's boat is floating a little bit higher. I think we shine a little bit more brightly because during the sequester, we didn't attrition people off of our program. Uh, the reserve that the council had set up, that the housing authority had set up, was able to make sure that we carried forward all of those families that need our assistance, uh, carry them uh, through the program, through that hard time. Well, I, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm very excited about this. This is excellent news because um, not only are we going to qualitatively impact the lives of 115 people or, or potentially families, but it takes the pressure off the city also in terms of having to deal with all these housing issues that that uh, exist in the city. Now, this isn't going to this isn't the, the solution to all the problems, all the housing problems. We have a list of close to 3,000 people, but I tell you, 115. If we look at how much, how many people we've taken off the list and placed them in the last five, six years, this is I'm sure this is much more than that. Uh, you're seeing significant movement. Yes. Yeah. Very good. So that will come to us? Uh, either on your next meeting on Tuesday or the, at the very latest, the Tuesday following the third. And the reason we're not doing all new uh, programs is because we just wouldn't be able to process that. From I fear that, that if it took us, if we, we lose those vouchers at that 181st day. And yes. so if uh, the capacity of, of uh, the organization is, you know, we feel that we can, we can uh, make the gambit that we can do 100 to 115, Probably not much more than that, and so we'll we'll absorb, we'll play it safe and hedge a bit by absorbing 50, knowing that the way that we've structured our Section 8 program, where we've limited the amount of assistance that we have, uh, ultimately folks graduate off of our program sooner, and then free up that money to bring so more, yes, more folks in. And also absorbing the 50 portables means that on each one of those portables that will become internal to, to Glendale, we're going to recover the 10 to 15 percent that Absolutely. we otherwise give up to the, the, that, the that whole city, be, the portable. We will voucher. get the full benefit of having that portable Excellent. house. That's, that's great. That's fantastic. So I look forward to that coming yes. back to us. And Probably on uh, June 3rd is what it looks June like. June 3rd. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Uh, and also our police chief is there. Yes. Chief, thank you for coming and waiting all this time. Uh, Thank you were Mr. hoping Mayor that, yeah, we're going to Council have. members, I was asked to provide a uh, brief update on the city's efforts to deal with our traffic issues and, in particular, the pedestrian fatalities that we have seen an increase in. Yeah. So I have a couple slides on a PowerPoint that I'll cover with you, and then at the very end, we're going to show our most recent uh, public surface announcement that we've also uh, put together. And while I'm the person up here speaking to you tonight, I can tell you this, the efforts that we have recently done in this community have been a combination and a partnership of all city departments. Every city director and their resources and support have been working together to find solutions, to find different ways that we can implement changes to reduce this problem in our community. And I can tell you this, this is not unique to Glendale. We are seeing an increase in pedestrian and bicycle fatality accidents across the nation. That's not to say we're going to accept this type of action in our community, but we are now being looked at by major cities who have now seen that this has been a problem in Glendale for some time. And even though we have applied many different strategies in the past, we're looking for even newer strategies and different ways that we can improve this. So we're getting calls from San Francisco and other cities who are seeing increases asking us, what are we doing and how can we work together to solve not only our problem here in Glendale, but across other major cities? So some of the recent efforts that we've done. I've been here four and a half months now, and this has been a priority issue that was made very clear to me even before my arrival. So the first thing I did was ask for an in-depth analysis of the fatal accidents over the past six years in Glendale to get hard data to start looking at how we're going to address the problem. First thing we did is we targeted uh, the demographics for our pedestrian accidents. Who are victims who have been struck in these accidents over the past six years? Is there a central focus group that we need to immediately address the issues with? And we came up with that. We also looked at the demographics of our drivers. We found that 45% of the drivers in the fatal pedestrian accidents are not residents of Glendale. So we knew from that that our efforts had to be even beyond our borders. 
we needed to find ways that we can reach out to the visitors and to workers who come into Glendale each and every day to do their jobs or visit here to shop. We looked at the locations and it wasn't surprising that the locations of most of these accidents are occurring in the most congested areas of our city, in the central area, the brand area, all where we have the highest concentration of pedestrians and the highest concentration of, of, of motor vehicles. Now each week we do an analysis of accidents that have occurred from the prior week. Again, looking at all these types of data to determine are we applying our resources in the locations for the violations that are causing these type of incidents. We participated in 12 community traffic and pedestrian safety meetings and workshops where we're getting out and sharing this information with the community, sharing our findings with those that can help us to get the message out to the people that are being mostly affected by these type of accidents. <coughs> Having limited personnel, we're finding ways that we can get messages out. We get constant calls from various neighborhoods and streets in the city asking for our help, asking for our presence to slow down traffic, to try to remind pedestrians or bicyclists to follow the rules of the road. Using our mobile traffic signs, we're able to put those signs out into these hot spots. We allow that message to try to get out in the neighborhood and then follow up with additional education and enforcement when appropriate. We have produced an updated public service announcement that we'll play at the end of this presentation and we will continue to find new ways to get the message out. I will tell you that this public service announcement is impacting and that's exactly what we're looking to do. We are taking our gloves off and dealing with this issue and we have to find ways to truly get people's attention and at times reach them on an emotional level. We've uh, conducted 30 pedestrian and driving enforcement and education operations. So in the past four and a half months, our officers have written over 4,700 citations to pedestrians and motorists to get their attention. We've also handed out an equal number of warnings and educational pamphlets to try to get the word out, trying to create that balance of enforcement as well as education. Our future efforts. We continue to expand our community partnerships. This is an issue that cannot be solved by city resources alone. What we've recently done is we're putting training together for 21 senior counselors. Through our analysis, we found that over 85% of the pedestrian victims for fatalities over the past six years were in the age group of 70 to 80. It's our senior members of our community. These senior counselors are individuals that work with the seniors in our community. They're going to be trained in getting a safety message out. They have the trust, they have the respect of the seniors, and they're going to carry that message out as ambassadors from the city and the police department to try to get this pedestrian group, this demographic of our community, to try to understand the importance of following safe pedestrian movements in the community. On June 5th, we have a pedestrian and traffic safety workshop in Armenian to reach that demographic group. We're doing this in partnership with the Library Arts and Cultural's Armenian Outreach Group. There's more information on that on the city website, and we are, again, finding a way to reach out to these group of residents at the locations where they congregate, where they visit. We're developing contemporary professional education materials in various languages and for various audiences, finding ways that we can reach out. We're looking at different ways in, in terms of putting bumper stickers on city vehicles to remind people uh, about pedestrian and traffic safety, putting signs up at our bus benches, putting signs for us on our buses and other city vehicles. We understand that signs and messaging, they're only effective for a short period of time and then they lose their uh, effectiveness. So we'll have to be constantly changing this material out, finding different ways that we can get this message out in different ways that people can relate to for the various groups that we are trying to address. We will continue our pedestrian enforcement activities, trying to find that correct balance between enforcement with citations as well as the educational component. Uh, we're also going to be looking at implementing that will be recently released the, the uh, findings from the Glendale Pedestrian Task Force. Looking at the findings from this community group that worked in collaboration with city officials to come up with different ideas through UC Berkeley on how we can address this issue in Glendale. The findings of that task force will be looked at and will be implemented throughout the city as we look at what they're suggesting, what we're already doing, what we're already planning to do, and finding a way to find different ways to address this issue. And the last thing is we're evaluating traffic calming devices. That's what we're looking at with public works and the traffic engineers. 
Is our striping correct in these areas? Are there things that we can do to make changes to the physical area or add contemporary traffic calming devices like the signs that flash for speed and, and they collect data on, on speeding cars in neighborhoods? Finding different things that we can do to get people's attention in the areas where we're having our pedestrian accidents and we're finding the highest incident of violations. This is an example of one of the newest uh, public information uh, methods that we're using. Well, we found that a lot of the pedestrians were, were struck during the evening hours, were struck, and they were wearing clothing that was a dark in appearance. They didn't have anything that was reflective. I think back to my own parents. I don't think they own any Nike material that has the reflective <laughs> devices on it. So when they go out and walk, they are unseen in dark areas. These are reflective armbands that can be slapped on the wrist. They call them slap bands. So we're handing these out to our senior groups. We're doing it in multiple languages. It's another way to remind people about the things when they're going out. And if <coughs> someone doesn't have reflective material, if one of our seniors is going out, this is a way that we can put a band on them to hopefully remind them as they walk to follow the rules of the road, but also perhaps be seen in a time when they're out in the, in the hours of darkness. Finally, this issue with traffic safety, as I've told many of the groups that I've spoke to, is an issue, again, that is not going to be solved by city resources alone. To make this change, we need a cultural change. We need behavioral changes in drivers, pedestrians, and bicyclists. Our lives have become very busy. Our lives have become very full of activities. And what we're seeing is all these accidents are preventable. If drivers were to pay attention a little bit more, if pedestrians were to follow the rules of the road, it's an equal combination of violations between motorists and pedestrians. So no, we, we need to reach each group equally in order to make these changes. This is just the first of many presentations, I think, that you will hear on the efforts that we're going to make. All the city departments working in collaboration will provide resources and support to try to implement new strategies in this community that can reduce these incidences. But we also will be reaching out and asking the community to take ownership. This is an item that cannot be just pointed up to us and saying, you need to fix this, because we cannot fix it alone. And other communities are finding the same thing. Just like we got people to make a change and start wearing seatbelts across this nation, we reduced the number of fatalities from accidents because seatbelts were being worn. Just like we reduced the number of fatalities from drunk driving because there was a national campaign to change behaviors on driving and drinking or driving under the influence. And the same with tobacco. There's a reduction in some of the tobacco-related health issues because there has been a major push. This is the next component. Finding ways that we can change behaviors in our pedestrians and our drivers is the way we're going to solve this. But the way we're going to do it is reaching out to our community so that everybody is talking about this at the dinner table, at community events, at different things that they go to. This needs to be the priority for us, and we need every member of the community on board with us in order to be successful in this campaign. At this time, I'm going to show the most recent PSA we've just done, and at the end, there's a message from the mayor on it. Let's go ahead and blow out the candles. Hello, my name is Zara Sinanyan. I'm your mayor for the city of Glendale. My children, wife, and parents make me who I am. I can't imagine a moment without them. Have you taken the time to explain the importance of road safety to your family? Explain the importance of making eye contact with drivers before stepping onto the roadway and always using a crosswalk. 
Glendale is one of the safest cities in the nation. Unfortunately, our seniors have become victim to fatal traffic accidents. Together, we can end these preventable fatalities. These are our elders. I need each of you to really ask yourselves, have you done enough to ensure your family is safe? Pretty impacting, and that's exactly what we're trying to do. As we develop additional PSAs, this is the type of message we're trying to get out. This has been sent out now to 40 local media outlets, churches, and community groups who have already signed on to say, yes, we want to be a part of the solution. We're also allowing groups to actually tape their own message with their leadership at the end of this so they have a personalized message to the, their church parishes or the different groups that they have. At this time, I'll entertain any questions you may have. Mr. Just, a, just a comment. I think it's a, a great PSA, and I think the uh, police department's doing a great job. Um, but uh, before you got here, Chief, in 2009, uh, I was able to get Jill Cooper to do our first traffic and uh, pedestrian safety two-day seminar. And they came in, gave us some suggestions, and saw a baseline as to where we are. We were having a problem back then, too. Uh, and she came recently a few, I think last month, if I'm not mistaken, and I had a chance to speak with her. And she was very positive on the changes that she saw in Glendale. Uh, despite the number of uh, accidents and fatalities, she said that it's something that's going on throughout the entire region and state. Uh, and I did ask her to come back and give us a report as to what she saw as an expert uh, in that regard. Um, but on top of that, um, through the efforts of the uh, chair of the Transportation Parking Commission, Mauro Yakubian, on her own initiative, she contacted traffic departments throughout the West Coast, spoke to uh, a city in Washington, I forget the name, I think it was Spokane, Washington. And they were very high on the, uh, the pedestrian flag concept, where a pedestrian would actually carry a flag, uh, fluorescent, uh, or reflective and either keep it with them or deposit them in receptacles at the most um, serious intersections. So she on her own has purchased a hundred of those flags and is ready to roll out a, a pilot program I think with the TPC where they can identify the most dangerous intersections and if that catches on along with the wrist slapper I actually I use the wrist slapper myself when I go out walking in the evening because um, you know every little bit of attention that you can draw to yourself would be great. So that's that's something else and I guess the point is that the community is collectively involved and committed to trying to solve this problem. We've got the Armenian language uh, issues and this is also in Armenian too, the, the PSA. Yes, yes. Uh, and I guess it's, a, it's available also in any other language Multi that, language, that yes. you could uh, put on at the end uh, to let everyone know what what the issues are and the dangers that we face. Uh, and, you know, we, like the mayor said, we couldn't think about living without one of our loved ones. I'm familiar uh, with the flag program. I mean, we are looking at all options. And there will be some times where, you know, people will be distractors and say, that may not work because we're not looking for those kind of comments. We're just saying, what's working somewhere else? Let's try it here. And we're going to keep trying. And we're going to have some setbacks. Not everything is going to work. But we're going to continue to work in a multifaceted way to find fixes here in Glendale. And it may be certain tactics work for certain parts of the city because we are a very diverse city in our geographics and our traffic flows and pedestrian flows. And we're reaching out to the parks where our seniors are there during the day. And we're trying to make those notifications and behavioral changes. Bikes, so, too. I mean, we've had several also. fatalities. If you've seen the white ghost bikes, on, right. I pass on a couple it every day, multiple times. <clears throat> chilling reminder of, of what can happen. Well, we'll be back in touch with you. And like I said, on behalf of all the departments in the city, we are uh, working on this issue. We know it's a high priority for the community as well as the council. We appreciate your support. And we look forward to looking back and, and, and realizing in the near future that we've been able to make some significant impacts in this problem. Thank, Thank you, Chief. You. I, and I really appreciate your determination. And uh, it really comes through. You're projecting the determination to see this process through and Again, all options are on the table. I mean, anything that's going to work, and we'll be flexible in terms of which, which strategies to adopt and make sure that 
we can minimize the, the problem. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think realistically eliminating it is just not going to happen, but minimizing it through education, through enforcement. And if you need a budget, now's the time to speak up because we're going through yeah. the budget <laughs> sessions and I'm not sure there's any money available, but to the extent I'll, I'll defer we can... to my boss to let me know what's right. appropriate. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if there's a need, let us know. Will do. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, what's next? Next item is the consent calendar. The following are routine and may be acted upon by one motion. A member of council or the audience requesting separate consideration may do so by making such requests before a motion is proposed. I'll move the consent calendar. Do we have a second? Can we have a roll call, please? Council members Friedman? Yes. Jarian? Yes. Montero? Weaver? Aye. Nearson Onion? Yes. Next, please. Next is oral communications. This is a portion reserved for three minute community event announcements. Thank you, and we have quite a number of cards, so let's let's stick to the three minutes, please. First person is Bob Tatian, followed by Leon Mayer. Honorable Mayor Sinanian, um, members of the City Council. Um, my name is Bob Tatian, I'm here representing the Armenian National Committee of America Glendale chapter today. And I come before you to uh, announce and uh, also invite all of you. Uh, the Armenian National Committee is going to be hosting an annual, its annual ANC A Glendale Mayor's Luncheon. It is an event that's open to the public. It is on Friday, May 16th at noon. It'll go to 1.30 p.m. at Renaissance Banquet Hall in the Crystal Ballroom. Uh, at 1236 South Central Avenue in Glendale, California. Um, tickets can be purchased uh, on itsmyseat.com, and I recommend anyone who's interested in attending go there and make a reservation. Um, we're doing it at cost. We're just, it's $50. It's a relatively low dollar event. We're just trying to recoup our costs, and uh, it is open to the public, and we invite this, members of the city council and members of the public at large to come and uh, have a nice luncheon with uh, the ANCA uh, of Glendale chapter and our newly uh, appointed mayor whom we're very proud of and uh, wish, wish him much success. So um, you're invited and I hope you can make it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Leon Mayer followed by Rolinda Biesmeyer. Good evening Mayor Sinanian, members of the council and staff. My name is Leon Mayer and I've been patiently waiting to talk to you about our next library event. I'm here as chairman of the Author, Artist, and Friends series, which we've done for uh, into 14 years at the library, all these years. And we have a great program for May 28th at the library, the Crusades of Cesar Chavez. And the author is Miriam Powell. And first of all, we're she just published this book last month. Just been published. It's all already being published in England. It was written up in the Economist magazine uh, a few weeks ago. And Miriam Paul is a uh, Pulitzer Prize winner, 25-year uh, uh, reporter for the Los Angeles Times, and. I could talk more about her, but I'm going to talk a little bit about Cesar Chavez. <laughs> Cesar Chavez uh, is a, one of the most famous uh, Hispanic uh, persons in the United States. He was born in San Luis, Arizona in 1927. He died 66 years later, and at the time he died, he was known to millions millions of people in our country. Uh, he organized the uh, United Farm Workers, and he had these national uh, boycotts of uh, rapes, for one thing, and we did it all over the country, and it worked. He finally broke the hold of the growers, and the union uh, survived, and the uh, boycott worked, the sit-ins worked, and he did this through non-violent resistance, and he believed in the principles of Mahatma Gandhi, the famous Indian leader that uh, 
of the last century. I could go on and on, but I'm not going to because we're probably all impatient. We've, it's been a long day, a long evening. Uh, all I can do is tell you that uh, the co-sponsors of the event, uh, the Latin American, I mean, the Glendale Latino Association, as, and uh, I found out in reading the book that there have been thousands of Filipino immigrant workers who were involved with the uh, United Farm Workers, and we invite them, of course, to come to the event, their relatives who live in Glendale. Now, that's going to be uh, Wednesday night, May 28th, 7 o'clock. We're having our, national, our annual meeting at uh, 6 o'clock. There'll still be some refreshments left if you get there a little early. Parking is free in the adjoining building. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Belinda Biesmeyer followed by Sharon Townsend. Mr. Mayor and members of the Glendale City Council, this is about my fourth presentation here in regards to the Glendale Youth um, Orchestra. As I said, my name's Rolinda Beesmeyer. I've lived here for 38 years here in Glendale, and I've been on the board of the um, GYO Glendale Youth Orchestra for 14 years, and my daughters played violin, cello, and viola when they were here. But um, I'm here tonight. Um, that I do have two slides that are supposed to be uh, here, and I don't see them up there yep. yet. There, oh, there they are. Okay, because I wanted to make sure that I got through before I said anything more. <laughs> okay, um, so, um, goodness. Well, you see, I'm still plugging away for the Glendale Youth Orchestra. And so, um, you know, I was here for the March concert and uh, trying to get people to come. And I will tell you, you missed a spectacular concert. Okay. But through no thought of your own, you were in Washington. I remember that. Okay. And so um, I just um, like to say, as we come to the end of our 25th um, season uh, for the Glendale Youth Orchestra, I'd like to invite you all to our concert on Sunday, May 18th at 7 o'clock at the um, Alex Theater. And I'm finding this Sunday, or that Sunday, is really busy for activities here in Glendale. <laughs> but this would be the last one. <laughs> okay. And so, as you know, um, at the um, Alex, we are primary presenting members, and we also have an affiliation with uh, Disney Hall uh, for presenting our concerts, too. And so um, we um, will be having a silent auction with our concert. It's at 7 o'clock at the Alex Theater. And I just want you to know that our kids are the best youth orchestra in the city. And so it's really, you know, something not to miss. And so um, that uh, my other flyer, it's um, in regards to we have auditions um, for um, our orchestra because it's an ongoing thing as far as losing members through um, attrition and graduation and moving. Um, so um, that, those rehearsals will be or auditions on um, Sunday, um, May 25th, I know, right uh, in front of uh, Memorial Day, and also Sunday, um, June 1st. And so um, I just wanted you all to know that our members are from 11 to 18 years old, and uh, they're from all parts of Southern California. And um, that you also need to know about the parking, that the best place is the Orange Street um, California parking, City Parking Garage, and um, that we do validate, and it ends up costing $1 when you come uh, to the concert. And so um, I just encourage you all to try to attend our final concert of the season. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Bismar. Uh, Sharon Townsend, followed by Stephen Bachi. Page. There you go. Thank you. Um, good evening, Mayor, City Council, and staff. I know you're eager to go home, so I'll, I'll be quick. Um, I'm here wearing my hat as a um, board member of the Glendale Fire Department's newly formed foundation. Back in the end of summer, in the beginning of fall, a foundation was formed for the fire department to provide um, fundraising efforts for many needed um, 
new um, equipment, which Battalion Chief Gully will tell you about in a moment. Our inaugural event is coming up. It's on Saturday, June the 7th. You have a flyer. I'm pretty excited about it, and I probably picked this event. We have 35 firemen that are going to be walking the ramp, modeling clothes. They've been dressed by Bloomingdale's. They've even, um, Chief Scoggins told me they've picked out their own music. Um, there are sponsorship opportunities, um, and I'm sure it'll be a great event. It's at 1 o'clock, and there'll be a VIP reception following at Bloomingdale's. I'd like to have um, Battalion Chief Gully tell you what this is about. Well, I just know I'd like to uh, definitely take the clothes home with us uh, from Bloomingdale's if we could. But, uh, yes, we do have some members that will be walking our own project runway uh, at Bloomingdale's, so it should be... Uh, a good event, but two of the items that we're really looking forward to getting off the ground with the funding is our community automatic external defibrillator project. And that's uh, a device that the general public can use to uh, restart a heart that has stopped out there in the community, and it's a very easy uh, device to use. The other one is to rebuild our fire building, our burn building, uh, that we call it. It use, uh, allows us to simulate fire situations that's in our community. And uh, we've long, we haven't had one for quite some time uh, because we just wore it out and we finally had to demolish it. So those are the two uh, projects that we're really looking forward to uh, getting off the ground. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Chief Gully. Steve Page, followed by Arlene Vador. Uh, Honorable Mayor, uh, City Council members, staff, uh, thank you very much. My name is Stephen Bage. I'm with the Rotary Club of Glendale, popularly known as the Thursday Noon Club. Uh, in keeping with uh, this May being uh, Bicycle Month, uh, we are sponsoring a, a charity ride. It's the Jewel City Fun and Fitness Ride this Sunday, May 18th, at Verdugo Park. Um, I invite all of you and members of the public to join us. Uh, we, um, for those that want to challenge, we have uh, at 7 a.m. Uh, there is uh, what we call calling a uh, gear grinder ride. It's a 45-mile uh, ride through some of the hillier parts of Glendale. Um, and then at 9, we have a fun and fitness ride, which is the more level half of that ride. And at uh, 10.30, we have uh, a rather unchallenging uh, family ride. Uh, we also have some bicycle safety uh, sessions uh, in the middle of the morning. Um, proceeds are going to uh, Glendale Youth Alliance, Home Men, and the Glendale YMCA. Uh, we've got some, in our, uh, in our audience this evening, we've got some uh, members of our co-sponsor, Walk by Glendale. I think they'll be making an announcement later. Glendale Adventist Medical Center and uh, my firm, Beach Capital Management. Uh, anyway, hope hope to see uh, as many of you as possible uh, this Sunday, the 18th. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Beach. Arlene Vidor, followed by Alec Portrasov. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, and Staff, thank you very much for your patience and fortitude. Um, I'm Arlene Vidor. I'm here with the Brand Associates. We're a nonprofit organization whose mission is to support and promote the Brand Library, uh, arts, culture, education, and as a historic resource as well. And this, not that you don't already have enough events to attend, but this Saturday, May 17th, from 7 to 9, is just plain fun. Uh, we're going to have the opening reception for our 42nd annual National Juried Art Exhibition. Uh, the exhibition was started in 1971, um, two years after the gallery was built. And it has been building and building and building for many, many years. And we have a wonderful set of 75 incredible, eye-popping, diverse pieces of art on display. They're also for sale if you're interested. So please come down 7 to 9 p.m. this Saturday, May 17th. There will be refreshments, and you can just mix and mingle with your friends and family, bring your kids, and enjoy the beautiful Brand Library and all of the beautiful art that we're going to have on display. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Alec Bartrusov. Hello, my name is Alec Bartrusov. I'm wearing my Walk Back Glenel hat today. We are a nonprofit organization here in Glendale promoting walking and biking and doing so safely. Uh, we have a few events coming up that uh, were already briefly touched upon. Um, the first one is on Thursday, which is Bike to Work Day. Um, I hope you'll join us that day. Uh, we're going to have pit stops in the morning at four different locations, um, Sonora and Flower being one of them. Um, for those of you that don't know, Sonora and Flower sees almost 100 bicyclists every morning um, that, we've, that we witness through this program. Uh, it's one of the busiest intersections for bicyclists, and we, we believe that it's because Disney and DreamWorks pays their employees to ride a bike to work. Um, so please join us for that in the morning. Um, if you're not inclined to ride your bike to work that day in the evening, if you'd like to join us for a social hour, we will have um, happy hour at Left Coast Wine Bar. Uh, on Harvard between Maryland and Brand. Uh, so please come for that at Left when? Coast from 5.30 to 7.30. Um, please attend that. And then we already talked about the Jewel City Ride, which is happening this weekend. We hope you'll join then. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out is um, thanks to Mr. Zern and Mr. Galanian at Public Works, we now have our uh, Glendale-specific branded Rules of the Road Pocket Guide. Um, Public Works has, has sponsored the latest print. I think we have 5,000 with us. Um, it is in English and Spanish, and it cites all of the rules of the road, the vehicle codes that pertain to bicyclists, um, and talks about how to ride safely on the street. Um, and the last tidbit is I know the city of Glendale, in partnership with us, is working on a bicycle and ped count report. Um, we're in the preliminary stages of that. There's a draft out right now. Um, and the one thing that you should know as elected officials is that between 2010 and 2013, there was a 36% increase in bicycling in the city. So very good, very good news. Again, it's preliminary information, and the final app should be out next month. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that's the last speaker that we have. What's next, Mr. Clerk? Next item under action items, uh, 8A is Director of Administrative Services. Finance selection of independent auditor for fiscal years 2013 through 14 through 27 through 18. Motion accepting the proposal received from Favrinek Trine Day and Company LLP to perform an annual audit of the financial records of the city in the amount of $98,470 for fiscal year 2013-14, $98,470 for fiscal year 2014-15, $98,470 for fiscal year 2015-16, Hundred and one thousand four hundred and twenty four for fiscal year twenty sixteen seventeen and hundred and four thousand four hundred and sixty seven dollars um, for fiscal year twenty seventeen eighteen and approving contingency of seventy five thousand one hundred and ninety five dollars for a total cost of five thousand seven five hundred and seventy six thousand and four hundred and ninety six dollars. Yes, Mr. Elliott. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I'll briefly describe the process. We did an in depth RFP. Services, it's uh, best practices to rotate um, auditor selection or at least go out to bid for a new auditor every five to six years, of which we are following. We had our previous auditor, McGladry, uh, for a term of six years. We started the process in February, issued an RFP to 12 uh, firms that do uh, government audit work that we know of. Um, uh, we got responses from seven, we whittled that down to four. Um, did one-hour interviews with the four um, candidates, uh, including uh, we included in the interviews uh, um, one of the audit committee members, Mike Velasquez, who's a, a partner in a CPA firm here in Glendale. Um, through that process, we then uh, whittled that down to three and uh, asked the firms, the uh, top three firms, to give us any additional information, any price adjustments they um, wanted to give to us after the interview process. Uh, they did that and then uh, came back and made the selection with all the data that we had um, uh, gotten from the interviews and the uh, reviewing the RFPs. And through that, we selected Vavernick Trine Day. Um, VTD, as they're known, has seven offices in California. They have uh, service about 300 different government agencies. They have approximately 200 different professionals um, on staff. And we are... Uh, recommending a three-year contract with two one-year options um, and a uh, cost of which uh, our city clerk mentioned 
um, and that's actually about $32,000 less, or excuse me, $34,000 less per year than our previous auditors. So I think the process um, was very good. Um, David Showalter, the partner with uh, VTD, is here. If you have any questions, <coughs> if not, I would um, ask to make the um, uh, motion. Questions? Motion? I'll move it at A1. Second. Can we have a roll call, please? Council members Friedman? Yes. Jarian? Yes. Quintero? Weaver? Aye. Mayor Sinanian? Yes. Next item on the agenda? Sorry you had to wait so long. 8B is City Attorney regarding amending the Glendale Municipal Code 1995 to reorder the business agenda items of the City Council agenda. B1 is an ordinance for introduction. Yes, Mr. Garcia. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, this is item that uh, the Council previously provides direction on to bring back an ordinance, uh, reordering, formalizing the process of having separate community events. Uh, event announcement portion of the agenda as well as oral communications at the end of the agenda. In addition, it's our recommendation to have the uh, consent calendar occur prior to uh, council comments and the rest of the business agenda so th those items can be handled as expeditiously, expeditiously as possible uh, before we get on to the regular business of the meeting. So that the ordinance has been prepared uh, current, consistent with that direction and, and it's, being, it's been presented to you. Okay. Mr. Mayor, if you wish, I'll introduce the ordinance. I mean, unless there's it's our wish. Who, who requested this ordinance? If you recall, we had when we had the discussion on whether uh, what to do about oral communications, um, there was no direction on that. But but the council did give us direction to prepare the ordinance to reorder, buy, the, reorder. reorder the agenda. I'll introduce the ordinance. Here it did. Already did. Mr. Council Member Weaver already did. Um, and, and just for. You know, to yes. add to City Attorney Garcia's uh, comments, this will just bring our um, agenda into <coughs> current compliance as to what our current practice is. Currently, right. individuals who may come in may be a bit confused as to why oral communications is at the end of the meeting, even though it's listed as item number six on the agenda. So um, this will help clear that up. Okay. But it's still within the discretion of the chair of the meeting. Yes. That's correct. That's part of the ordinance that hasn't changed. It's, it's up to the chair to... The chair can reorder items on the agenda based on you know the needs of the council at the time. Okay. Accept motion to uh, home. You motion can't to what? Go home. <laughs> to adjourn. You can't move that up. <laughs> right. I'm just joking. <laughs> it's <laughs> late. It's a long day. It's not over yet. <laughs> I know. Um, so we have a motion. No, we have no, no, ordinance. Oh, we had no introduction of the ordinance. See? Okay, thank you. Late. It is getting late. You're right. <coughs> um, what's next? Next is oral communication. Discussion is limited. <coughs> item is not part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Council may question or respond to a speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. The city manager may refer the matter to the appropriate department for investigation and report. Great. Thank you. Uh, first speaker is Lorraine Mohill, followed by Margaret Hammond. Good evening, uh, Mayor Sinanian and Council Members. City Manager Ochoa, in your recent rebuttal to my husband, Mike Mohill, in the Glendale News Press, you stated that he was wrong, that 84% of our pension obligations are funded, not unfunded, as he incorrectly stated the week before. However, I have a question for you. Your comments are disingenuous. City records indicate that in the years 2001 to 2003, our pension obligations were funded 118% to 127%. In other words, we were overfunded about 27%. Now we are funded at 84%. Where did the 43% go? From 127% to 84%. Mr. Ochoa, we are talking about percentages. But let us instead talk about dollars and cents. According to the 2013 CAFRA report, on page 92, the unfunded debt you minimized at 16% equates to $32 million, for which the taxpayers of Glendale are on the hook because we belong to CalPERS. The city of Glendale had to write a check to CalPERS for $32 million in 2013, and in 2012, the city of Glendale had to write another check for $26 million. Because Glendale belongs to CalPERS, we are on the hook for their failed investments. 
Glendale taxpayers paid a total of $58 million to CalPERS because of their investment losses in 2011 and 2012. Mr. Ochoa, Glendale taxpayers guarantee 7.5% of CalPERS investments. What bank pays 7.5%? We're lucky if we can get 1%. In these harsh economic times, don't you think we should start looking for alternative pension plans for our city workers? Could it be since 2001 that our safety personnel have been receiving 90% of their last year's salary as their pensions for life? Or is it because our previous council in 2001 also made retroactive pay increases to previous retirees? How many millions of dollars of taxpayers' money have been transferred to pay for our retired union workforce. Mr. Ochoa, 90% of the American workforce is on Social Security and a 401k plan. Why not put new Glendale hires on Social Security and a 401k plan? As my husband would say, just like the folks who have to pay the bills. Mr. Ochoa, the wealthy cities of La Cañada, Flint Ridge, Malibu, and Calabasas as well as half the cities in the county belong to Los Angeles County Employees Association, La Serra, because their pension plan is self-funded and the taxpayers are not on the hook for their failed investments. Average county employees earn $1,000 to $2,000 a month less than a comparable Glendale Calpers employee, depending on classification. City Council is looking for solutions to the budget deficit. Of course, Mike understands negotiated contracts with the existing workforce won't change. But new contracts would be different. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Moyle. Uh, Ms. Hammond, just give me one minute. Uh, Council Member Nigerian wanted to ask if there is any, any rule where it calls for the speaker to address the council as opposed to anyone on the staff. I don't know what the answer is, so. Well, you're not going to leave before you hear the answers from Mr. Ochoa, are you? Yes, just yes. like Mike. She is leaving. She's not interested in the answers. That was a nice way to get a so campaign let's, speech. Let's have Mr. Garcia's answer. While, uh, Mr. Mayor, while there is no written rule, I think it is appropriate, it's permissible for you as the chair to, to direct any speaker to have, direct those comments to the, mayor, to the chair and the, and the council members. Obviously, can take whatever criticism of whatever staff member uh, is here, but I think the, the Mr. Nigerian is correct that the comments do have to be directed to the council. Okay. Could we could we have Mr. Ochoa briefly answer some oh, of the questions? Briefly, they were presented as questions. I, I find it very disturbing that the speaker did not stay to hear the answers to her and her, mostly to her husband's questions, but I think the public has a right to very briefly hear just it's, overall. It's, I know there was a Mr. lot Mr. Mulhill's campaign well, speech. Only if you, if you feel like you have to. I would only say that, that you know, to her credit, uh, uh, Mrs. Mohill is just as incorrect as Mr. Mohill in his understanding of the way that this system works. Further, to the, the extent that by contracting out with the county, you somehow are not on the hook for a public sector pension, it, it's uh, laughable because the county is a public agency and they, uh, they do have a pension system in many cases richer than the one that this council has uh, created is very spartan by comparison. Uh, to the extent that you would somehow disassociate yourself with PERS. You saw in your last budget study session that the cost uh, that, uh, that is discounted forward that the folks at PERS would come knocking on your door for makes it a, a completely uh, unrealistic option to you. I would hope and expect that Mr. Mohill, who watches uh, city council meetings, uh, at least he, he claims to, uh, would understand that having uh, viewed that. If you have any specific questions, then it's late. Um, certainly we can put uh, Mr. Elliott in contact with the, with the Mohills, uh, but if not, then we can move forward from here. But most of what was said is just as incorrect as what her husband tends to say. Well, he so said so on. many of those <coughs> things before, again and again and again, so. Ms. Hammond. What the? Not worth the time. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Honorable mm -hmm. Mayor, members of the City Council and staff. Uh, my name is Margaret Hammond, and it's getting late and I'm tired. Uh, but number one, I thought any re uh, talking back to the people uh, usually came at the end. 
wasn't put into the middle of uh, anyway, as usual. Um, the bulky item uh, is working very well, and um, the number being 818-548-3916. Uh, keep calling it, and it will help to keep our city clean and beautiful. There is another program that's uh, really terrific, and it's uh, Animal Waste Courtesy Station Adoption Program. Uh, if you have a lot of animals in your neighborhood that are being walked and allowed to mess up your lawn and your sidewalks, uh, there is, uh, you can uh, apply to uh, be a sponsor of a station, a waste station in your neighborhood. Uh, all you have to do is call the, um, I guess they said, Community Development Department at 818-548-3700. And uh, they provide, once you uh, do adopt it, uh, you, uh, they provide the bags for the uh, people to take care of their animals' waste. Um, anyway, it's a thought, and it will help our city health-wise and keeping it clean and beautiful. And I believe we have a new gentleman that's going to be in charge of the bulky item. Uh, no? <laughs> Actually, ma'am, that is correct. John Tuckjolly is now in charge of bulky item pickup. He only wears a suit right, during the day. Okay. <laughs> As a matter of fact, John, what are you doing here right now? I must have missed out while I was on uh, sick leave, should I say? Anyway, um, then the other one, you know, it's bad enough you keep dumping all those buildings down in South Glendale. You get away with it because there's no <laughs> homeowners down there. There is only one homeowners association, Adams Hill, and it, there's nobody else to represent those poor people down there. They don't even know until they, like, the buildings are going up. They keep calling me saying, what's happening now? I know that the condominium sounds like a good deal, but again, is it going to have enough parking? Well, in that area, I don't know whether it matters. It matters in where you're putting them at Central and Los Feliz and at Central and San Fernando Road. The traffic situations there are horrendous. There is never less than three or four lights you have to wait to get through at San Fernando Road and Los Feliz. But I beefed about that, and you're going to add to it, and you're going to keep adding to it because there's no one to speak up and to take a stand. One person I understand, yes. I know that Mr. Nigerian has spoken up, that we have enough down there. We don't need any more garbage. But again, you get away with it because there's nobody but somebody like me that will get up and talk about it for years. I've been doing it for 35 years. Yes, sir, I have. But what, you know, where the rest of the people are, I have no idea. They wake up one morning and there's a big, tall building sitting in their backyard. And uh, the other thing I'd like to know about, for instance, there's a restaurant at Brandon uh, uh, Harvard. They put out tables and chairs on the sidewalk to the extent that there is not even this much room for a pedestrian to walk. And the trees, you have to walk around the tree wets because they're in that same park. Now, why should I, as a citizen who's paid my taxes, have to practically walk in the road to accommodate a restaurant that's put out tables and chairs. I mean, the same thing with the valet parking over at Americana on Brand. They've taken over that strip, the white strip going down that used to be for parking for people. Now the valet has taken that over. I mean, it's like craziness. The people in Glenda, we have no rights at all anymore. You hand them over to anybody that comes along and says, oh, you know, oh, we need it, we want it, we're running a business, and to heck with what the rest of the people say. You know, there isn't one new street that has been added in, South Glend in uh, central Glendale. You, you built 1906, the city, the same streets. You're using the same streets. You haven't enlarged them, you haven't done anything. They're still the same street, the same grid. It was talked about years ago. I know, I was on a committee. You, you, how can you add, in, you know, any more streets and you keep adding more housing and more cars without a, enough parking? It's absolutely insane. You've destroyed the city. You're destroying downtown. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Hammond.
Um, yes, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Mr. Mayor and Council, just a reminder that um, although um, you requested to adjourn in memory of uh, Vikan Simonian, there is a closed session item and you will have to recess to closed session and then you may adjourn the meeting uh, in closed session in his memory. Very well, we shall do that. So should, can we adjourn the general session, the general meeting, evening meeting? Mr. Attorney. Sorry, I think the record could be noted that the adjournment will take place in uh, Mr. Simonian's uh, name and honor, and then, but we recess into uh, the closed session, if it's the council's desire to recess. So, and let me just add, I'm sorry, uh, but a member of uh, Vikan's uh, family is here, uh, Saro Kirkonian, <coughs> uh, and he, uh, he has indicated that services for Vikan will be held on Tuesday at the Hollywood Hills Forest Lawn. Vikan was, was extensively loved and known throughout the community, so... Those interested, um, can Saro say a few words? Saro, it's not on the agenda. Yeah. But. Sure, yeah. Mayor Sinanian and members of the City Council, um, I want to first thank this, the City Council for mm -hmm. honoring my cousin Vikan Simonian tonight. Um, he was a, practically his whole adult life a resident of Glendale. He served as a judge pro tem right across the street for uh, many days. Um, he was almost judge of the year in terms of the amount of time he volunteered. He did pro bono activities here in Glendale on a number of different topics, and he worked with the state bar to publish pamphlets for citizens so that they would know their rights. So I'm very grateful that the council recognized him, and his funeral is this coming Tuesday, May 20th, at the Hollywood Hills, um, uh, the chapel that's right as you enter the um, park. and. Um, at 9 30 a.m once again thank you for remembering my cousin very sorry for your loss thank you Sarah. he'll be he'll be missed by a lot of people he's the sweetest human being thank you thank you thank, thank you. you mayor thank you Council. mr clerk and, and indeed um just you know uh, some people may not know this but Viken was um he, he passed all too young but he was a all-star track star at ucla that's right, that's right. It was just um, very also sad to see. Also qualified for the U.S. Olympic Finals in 1984. Two hour yes, thank you. Thank you Closed session item at 1A's conference with legal counsel anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation pursuant to subdivision D2 of government code section 54956.9 arising from potential litigation from owners of property generally located at terminus of New York Avenue near Park Vista Drive relating to the city's historical position regarding the legal requirements to subdivide said property. Thank you. Mr. Garcia, do you expect to report out on this item? Well, we do not. Okay. Then we're in recess.